Meanwhile, college campuses across the country are struggling to handle an outbreak of anti-Semitism, and the concern is reaching the halls of Congress. The House Ways and Means Committee is set to hold a hearing next week that will look into the violent threats and protests against Jews on campuses. And just yesterday, during a hearing on free speech on campuses, 10 people are now facing charges after they repeatedly shouted pro-Palestinian slogans while witnesses, including a Jewish Cornell undergrad, testified about the death threats she was getting at school. Professors and student organizations have been fueling Jew hatred and spreading it across campus with disregard or potentially even with deliberate intent to incite. Free Palestine! Anti-Zionism is not anti-Zionism! Committee will be in war. Joining us now is the student who was interrupted at that hearing, Amanda Silberstein. We're also joined by Jillian Lederman, a senior at Brown University and chair of the Hillel International Israel Leadership Network. Thank you both for being with uh, me. I really, really appreciate Jillian, you recently wrote an op-ed for The New York Times saying, what's happening on college campuses is not free speech, it's mob harassment. Tell me what's happened to you. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. It's been an incredibly difficult time to be a college student right now. At Brown, immediately after Hamas terrorists infiltrated Israel on October 7th and murdered hundreds of civilians, there was a student group, Students for Justice in Palestine, alongside 30 other student groups that released a statement holding Israel entirely responsible for the violence that had been committed against them. Since then, we have had protests with, hun with hundreds of students on campus shouting slogans like, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, calling for the annihilation of the Jewish state, saying things like, glory to our martyrs, the martyrs being the Hamas terrorists. Glory to our martyrs. Glory to our martyrs. We have had people on campus tearing down posters put up of kidnapped Israeli civilians, purposefully tearing them down so that students would see the fragments that remained. I have been confronted on campus for being outwardly pro-Israel. Other students have been confronted on campus confronted for being... Confronted how? At a campus party, two students came up to me and told me that I was a supporter of genocide and wouldn't leave me alone. I know other students who have been yelled at for being outwardly Jewish. This is an environment of harassment on campus, and it's something that Jewish students are facing all across the country. Amanda, you are at Cornell, where another student was arrested for making death threats against you and other Jewish students uh, at that school. And Cornell was actually forced to cancel classes for a day because of the threats. What's it like for you to be a student on that campus? It's, it's a really surreal environment right now. I mean, tensions are still running really high, even, even following the arrestment and arraignment of a fellow student. Just today, uh, student groups hosted a die-in in which they laid on the floor and screamed, Cornell is complicit in genocide. Uh, quoting things, including from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Uh, and as a Jewish student, along with a bunch of other Jewish students who were there, I was shaking. There were classes going on that were being disrupted. It's, it's really, really just insanity what is happening right now and that Jewish students across the country do not feel safe. Yeah, Amanda, you say your family in Israel is more worried about your safety here in the United States on the campus of Cornell than they are for their own safety in Israel. It's, it's really, really insane. My, my family, my grandmother lives in Israel. She was there on October 7th. Uh, she was basically in a bomb shelter for the entire day and is still every day having to run back to bomb shelters in her building. And she is constantly texting me, asking if people know I'm Jewish, if, if I could remove any signs of Judaism from me, if, I, if, I'm been, if I've been walking alone with me, if I could carry pepper spray and a pocket knife in case someone attacks me. Julian, uh, Julian, more disturbingly is the, the reaction of some of these professors, because you might be able to excuse students. I mean, as I heard somebody say, what do they know? They're, you know, young, they're passionate. They don't know about the world yet for sure, and they're still learning. Professors are supposed to be people of wisdom and people of learning. And you were saying that many of these professors are also engaging in this. We have a, a Cornell professor who said he was, quote, exhilarated by the attacks. A Columbia professor celebrated the, quote, awesome scenes of Palestinian resistance fighters. A Yale professor blamed Israel for the attacks. And 170 Columbia and Barnard professors signed a letter defending students who blamed Israel for the attacks. These are professors. 
They're tasked with teaching students, with educating them, with making sure that students feel welcomed and accepted in their class. That doesn't mean not introducing uncomfortable viewpoints. That doesn't mean not encouraging difficult conversations in class. But what it does mean is that professors should not be justifying violence, should not be exhilarated by violence in class. There's a standard that professors need to be held to. There's overt discrimination happening in classes where professors are in positions of power and they're actively encouraging and supporting the genocide of students in their classes, family and friends. This is not something that should be accepted by universities. Universities have done very little to discipline these professors, to dismiss these professors, and it's leaving students feeling incredibly vulnerable to be in class. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.